Hi, I'm Jay, and I'm American. Those of you who regularly watch videos here on the Simple English Videos channel or on our website, simpleenglishvideos.com, know that usually my introduction is preceded by Vicky saying, Hello everyone, I'm Vicky and I'm British. And I'm Jay and I'm American. Hello everyone, I'm Vicky and I'm British. And I'm Jay and I'm American. Hi everyone, I'm Vicky and I'm British. And I'm Jay and I'm American. But as many of you know, my darling wife, my life partner for nearly a quarter of a century, passed away on the 20th of December, 2022. It was sudden and unexpected and horribly sad for me and our entire family. Vicky and I had just moved to Spain four months earlier. All I can tell you is that those four months were among the happiest times of our lives. And I'm glad Vicky and I shared them together. Simple English videos will continue. Vicky's son, Tom, and her daughter-in-law, Jana, and I will add to the more than 400 videos already on this channel. But now, it is time to reflect on just who this extraordinary person was, this amazing person with whom I shared my life. I'd like you to watch the memorial service that we held on January 14, 2023, with friends and colleagues from all around the world. And thank you all for your support and for the kind words I've received from so many of you. Welcome everyone, thank you for being here. We'll begin shortly after the top of the hour. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Jay Silber, Vicki's husband and life partner. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Joanne, and thank all of you so much for joining us today to remember this incredible person that I have called my life partner, who for the last 24 years has joined me, often led me <laughs> on an incredible journey through the through life. And today I'd like to take you through Vicky's professional life with me for the last 24 years and some of our personal life as well. Tom and Georgie, Vicky's son and daughter are here. I know, I know Tom wants to talk about their mom with all of you as well. My sons, Noel and Scott are here too. And there are a few of you who have already asked to say a few words after our presentations. Um, well, after Tom and I have finished our presentations. So we'll turn things over to them uh, at that point. And then we'll ask the rest of you um, to indicate in the chat window, and you can find the chat icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen, um, in the chat to tell us if you'd like to say a few words and given if we have time, we'll certainly get around to as many people as we can. So most of you know Vicki as the author of many, many uh, course books for Oxford University Press and uh, uh, primarily, and as well as Cambridge and, and Pearson. Her books have been used in schools all over the world to teach English, particularly the language of business English, to untold numbers of learners. Her work was twice recognized by the late Prince Philip of the UK and his English-speaking union, once for business objectives and once for business opportunities, both best-selling OUP textbooks. And this is actually seen from one of our YouTube videos where Vicki announced plans for another book she hoped to publish on our simpleenglishvideos.com website. 
I was astonished, as you can tell, by the size and quantity of her publishing portfolio when we put all these books, CDs, and videos together for this particular YouTube production. And I am to this day uh, still in awe of her enormous contribution to English learning. While we're looking at her LinkedIn profile, I'll just uh, mention to you that um, in the early 2000s, she wrote Tech Talk with John Sides for OUP and later Lifestyles for Pearson. I mention these because Vicki Hollett and I began our life together in 1998, shortly before she began her work on Tech Talk. And not too many years later, she served on the editorial board of the Oxford University Press's ELT Journal, an honor that she treasured. So while many of you know Vicki professionally, I would like to spend a few minutes reflecting on our extraordinary relationship and our years together, not just as husband and wife, but as collaborators in teaching English around the world with our YouTube channel, Simple English Videos. Welcome to Simple English Videos. I'm Vicki and this is Jay. Tell them to subscribe. Together we'll help you speak English more fluently and with confidence. Tell them we're funny. We have grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, quizzes and colloquial English. Tell them they'll enjoy it. Jay's American and I'm British and we'll show you how English is used in real live conversations. Subscribe already. <laughs> We started producing a, a few videos back in 2009, but by 2012, uh, we started to get serious. And in 2016, Vicky won a North American YouTube competition called the YouTube Next Up, where she won a week's free training at YouTube's New York studios and some grant money for video equipment. At that point, we were producing one new video every week for what was then a subscriber level of less than 10,000. Today, it's greater than a quarter of a million. Now, there are many more highly successful uh, YouTube, uh, YouTubers, English language training YouTubers, um, than, than we are. But from the comments that we've received, we know that from the very beginning, we had a winning formula that people around people around the world just love. They loved us together and they loved learning from our videos. There were over 400 videos on Simple English videos on the Simple English Videos channel and its companion website, simpleenglishvideos.com. Vicky wrote and directed every single one of them. Now I'm not an ELT professional, but I am a video and multimedia producer. So I became the sound guy, the camera guy, the lighting guy and the, and the co-anchor who Vicky made into someone our audience was able to learn from. It's quite a collection of videos there. She also made me do things I never would have dreamed I could do. I'm a former journalist, a television journalist, deadly serious on-camera presence in my day. But with Vicky, I could sing and dance. Yes? I think you should wash these. But they're black. So? Black socks never get dirty. The longer you wear them, the blacker they get. Sometimes I think I should wash them, but something inside me keeps saying, not yet. get dirty. The longer you wear them, the blacker they get. Sometimes I think I should wash them, but something inside me keeps saying, not yet. <laughs> As part of this journey, we got to collaborate with a number of wonderful YouTube and internet English language training experts. Among them, our dear friends, uh, Rachel of Rachel's English, 
Jennifer of English with Jennifer, who, by the way, participated in our last YouTube video produced and aired just three weeks before Vicky's passing. I'm so glad, Jennifer, that we got to work together that, uh, that one last time. Our good friend Craig from English Podcast here in Spain joined us uh, in several videos as did Claire from English at Home with Claire. And there's Jason Levine, better known as Fluency MC in the world of ELT. Jason's played an important role as Simple English videos grew over the years. And a special call out to our boss, <laughs> Kathy Fagan, an English teacher from Philadelphia, another dear friend. In our skits, uh, where Vicky and I were employees, Kathy was our sometimes mean boss. Back in 2014 and 2015, we produced 14 different live programs called The English Show with Fluency MC. Let's watch an edited section of the first show. Come on, everybody. It's going to start. Well, that's true. But, you know, it took... Who did that? Hey, we're here! <laughs> Has it worked? Are we online? I think we are. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Hey, we Vicky, how are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, did you hear Carter? Carter's here as well. He'd like to Carter say hello. Carter is live. <laughs> Vicky is live. Jace is live. <laughs> um, so, I think we should. I think we should get on with it, Jace, and work Let's up go. for our language point. What do you think? Let's Absolutely. find out what the language point is. Oh, no, first of all, we need to introduce you to the man who's working behind the scenes here. Jay, mm -hmm. where are you? I am right here, and I'm glad you're giving me a moment because I <laughs> <laughs> everything went so crazy this morning. I have to go find the language point video that you're talking about. <laughs> ah, well, you know what? While Jay is doing his engineering stuff, see? Two thumbs up, Jay. Uh, Vicky, we should probably say who we are because I don't think everyone there knows who we are. Shouldn't that's, we that's introduce ourselves point. just a little bit? That's a good point. I'm Vicky Hollett and I work with Jay, who's my husband. And together we, we operate the Simple English Videos website and YouTube channel. And I'm an English teacher but I've also written lots of books, so I'm a writer too. But of course, these days, I make videos. What's it gonna be, Jay? What's our language point? But maybe, first of all, I should come and see you in Paris, Jace. I wonder, could you Jay, do that? Jay, could you take me to Paris at all? Please, Jay. <laughs> Chase, I'm here with you. Whoa! Oh, it's great. I like yes. it. I like it. High <laughs> <laughs> five. Uh, God, we had fun with those programs. <laughs> I mentioned Craig Wheeland of, of English Podcast here in Spain. Craig was in a number of skits that Vicky wrote, and here's part of one where we were helping teach people about the FC, FCE or B2 exam. Uh, Craig, you're such a great straight man. <laughs> Let's watch this one. And also, think about what questions you could ask your partner. Now you have about two minutes to say why these inventions are important in our everyday lives. Well, refrigerators are the most important. Yeah. I keep a lot of beer in mine. It's a very big American refrigerator. It makes ice as well, which is really nice in the summer when it's hot. It's awesome. Speak together. 
I agree that refrigerators are important because they stop food going bad. The examiner wants to see interaction with the other candidate here. So make sure you discuss the question with your partner. Talking to the examiner is a common mistake. <laughs> I mentioned Rachel of Rachel's English as one of our collaborators. Here's an excerpt from one of our most popular videos. Let's go to the check-in desk. We're going flying in today's lesson. And we have a very special guest. Rachel of the wonderful Rachel's English channel is here to help us. If you haven't subscribed to Rachel's YouTube channel yet, do it right away. It's the best place to improve your pronunciation. OK, let's check in for our flight. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi, we need to check in. The machine didn't recognize my passport. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Recife. Rio. We're flying to Rio, and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. They're on your head. And uh, finally, part of our very last video together with Jennifer of English with Jennifer, uh, a live broadcast on YouTube uh, on November 17th, just a month before Vicky's passing, our first and only video from Spain. Okay, so um, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. I, I'm so glad to have Jennifer with me because Jennifer, I don't know if you know, has written a book. And I opened the book <laughs> late one night and I think I didn't go to bed till about two or three in the morning, Jennifer, because I couldn't put it down. It was so good. Um, so we're going to talk about Jennifer's book. And um, I think some of you also want to know what happened to us because we disappeared for much longer than we, th than we planned. But really, this, this chat is about life changes. I don't know if anything has changed in your life recently, but a lot's changed in ours. And the big thing is, of course, we've moved. <laughs> mm, you changed more than just your zip code, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> True. And that was when we decided to move to Spain. <laughs> and we're now living in Almeria, which is down in the southeast of Spain, just opposite North Africa and um, across the Mediterranean. And it's absolutely beautiful. We love it. It's a real adventure for us. And it's been quite a journey. Aha, uh -huh. they had their fill of Philly, someone said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, oh, Michael is, saying, Michael is saying Spanish is a fun language to learn. More difficult than English, though. Do you know, it is a fun language to learn, Michael. There is Vicky getting her fill of Philly. It was uh, at the airport on our last uh, day in Philadelphia. Vicky was having a Philly cheesesteak and a oh. Yingling beer. Yingling is, was a locally produced beer in not far from Philadelphia. And cheesesteaks are so important that anybody who's running for president in the United States must go to Philadelphia and eat a cheesesteak if he or she expects uh, the population to vote for them. Well, back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but now, of course, um, it's always tapas. Oh, and red wine. They love, make some wonderful wines here. And uh, no, we're, we're having a great time. It's my pleasure to tell you that Vicky's son, Tom, and her daughter-in-law, uh, Yana, both teachers of English uh, as a foreign language here in Spain, will join me in producing more videos for the Simple English Videos channel in the months to come. And that's uh, Tom and Yana with my grandson, Matty. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a way we feel that we can continue Vicky's work and, and honor her memory. So look for the three of us in the near future on the Simple English Videos channel. And finally, before I turn to some of Vicky's colleagues and mentors, publishers and editors, I'd like to give you just a little insight 
into how happy we how happy we were here. Uh, well, we got together in 1998, uh, and we never really wanted to be apart after that. We got married on a magical day in May of 2002. It was, Vicky said, <laughs> was the funniest and the happiest day of her life. And I think you can see that in this lovely pictures of her with her children and good friends. At the bottom, you see Tom and Georgie performing acrobatics at our wedding, my son Noel speaking. The group of us getting together, my brother up over there on the right bottom, uh, was a lovely, beautiful, wonderful day that, that we treasured every, every day of our lives. She and I traveled the world together, often on trips um, uh, to promote her books for Oxford University Press. So it's in Thailand. And some of you from OUP will remember Sarg, the OUP rep in Bangkok, who became a wonderful friend before his untimely passing. And then to Brazil, where Vicky was a plenary speaker <laughs> at uh, a couple of conferences. And that led to uh, two further vacations in Brazil that we took. We loved it there. Uh, and of course, we traveled uh, throughout Europe together to the UK, of course, France, Italy, Germany, where we hung out with John Sides, Vicky's Tech Talk co-author, and of course, to Spain. And we traveled extensively in North America as well. We spent uh, the time from February of 2022 until August 16th of last year, selling our U.S. home, wrapping up our life in Philadelphia, and moving here to Almeria, Spain. We were really happy here. It was here that, well, you can see us together here at the Plaza of Yaja, where some of Vicky's favorite restaurants and her favorite, <laughs> favorite baths <laughs> were located. It was just a joyous thing for us to be together here. Vicky was uh, at the Casa del Cine, where Almeria has a great history of motion picture making. And that's John Lennon, who spent uh, several weeks at the Casa del Cine, where it is reported that he was inspired to write Strawberry Fields. And here in Granada with Matty at the Science Museum, uh, there's Vicky with Albert Einstein. But I think this picture says it all. We were, she was happy in the last four months of her life. Happy to be here with me, happy to be close to her family in both the UK and Spain, and excited about our new life adventure. I'll treasure the joy on her face for the rest of my life. Now, there are a number of you here who have asked to speak about Vicky, uh, about the Vicky Hollett you knew. But first, her son, Tom, my new Simple English Videos co-presenter, would like to say a few words. So, Joanne, uh, would you organize that, please? Absolutely. And Tom, just a reminder to unmute. And there you are. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm here with my wife, Jana. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for attending. Uh, it's heartwarming to see so many people, so many names that uh, I, I know from over the years, close friends to mum. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was sorting through her documents, separating royalties contracts from uh, writing contracts. And uh, I've been caught by surprise, just like Jay, by how much she managed to achieve in her writing career. Uh, one document caught my eye in particular. Uh, I came across an acceptance letter from Oxford University Press uh, approving a manuscript that she wrote with colleagues at EF Language School in Cambridge, uh, Emma Tanner, Roger Carter and Liz Lyon. Uh, Mum told me that the book was inspired by a filing cabinet in the teacher's staff room where she and her colleagues shared speaking activities that had gone down well with their business English students. Uh, the filing cabinet's contents were eventually collected and transformed into a book called In at the Deep End. Uh, it wasn't her, her biggest hit, as we know, but uh, I've mentioned it because I think it was the moment where uh, my mother had found her calling. And as they say, the, the rest is history. Uh, her writing career spawned many opportunities for her to travel, to speak, 
to connect with people from all over the world, to make great friends, many of whom are here today. And it also seemed to activate a strong desire in her to keep learning. Uh, she continued developing her skills. She completed a, her master's degree at the same time I, I completed my A-levels. Uh, then she moved, of course, into the digital space with her own YouTube channel, as, as Jay has already mentioned, uh, which in turn spawned new skills for her in presenting, in comedy writing, uh, in video editing, and most recently in digital special effects. So really, like Jay, I'm just in awe and inspired by uh, her continual desire to learn and improve and, and do so much. Uh, and I also want to mention, going back to the 1980s, even before her writing career had taken off, Mum had shown a flair for creativity already. Uh, she used to make these big, handmade, bright, beautiful pop-up cards where huge animals like hippos and elephants would unfold and pop out upon opening the card. Uh, they were delightful, and she used to sell them at craft fairs. Uh, I know Georgie will <laughs> probably Georgie doesn't have such fun memories of being dragged along to these craft fairs with me, but... Mum always made sure we had books or puzzles or things to keep us occupied. Uh, I'd also like to, to mention a story that's unconnected to, uh, to English language teaching, but a personal story that, that means a lot for me, where mum showed her her spirit for adventure. Uh, in 1997, she took me to visit Georgie in Zimbabwe. Uh, Georgie was on a, a volunteer teaching placement at a school out in the, the Zimbabwean countryside. During this trip, mum let, let us go whitewater rafting on grade five rapids, past crocodiles and hippos on the Zambezi River. She also let me bungee jump off the Victoria Falls Bridge, although she couldn't bring herself to watch it in person. Uh, I mention this memory because it's still perhaps the, the, the Victoria Falls are probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in, in the world. And, and it, it's a very precious memory to, to have that time with mummy, with my mum and Georgie. Uh, and also mum herself reminisced about this holiday just a month or two ago when we had heavy rain here in Almeria. And uh, it reminded her of a storm that she found herself driving us through in a hired car on a dirt track through the African bush. Uh, the hired car's windscreen wipers were no match for the torrential African downpour, but at a snail's pace, we made it back from George's school in the countryside to our destination city, Bulawayo, for what must have been one of the most satisfying beers of mum's life. Uh, I feel incredible, incredibly lucky that her and Jay chose to come to Spain and mum found a beautiful house just a few minutes walk from us. We enjoyed four amazing months together where I watched her relationship with her grandson Matthew instantly flourish and where I saw her, her spirit for creativity with the games she started playing with him and adventure shine. She made herself at home in a foreign land and she started overcoming the language barrier, mastering expressions such as otro vino tinto, por favor. Her and Jay wasted no time in exploring the many tapas bars and restaurants here and we wasted no time in joining them. Uh, and in her first months here, I gained three kilos, uh, a testament to the, the fine dining that we all enjoyed. Even though she is gone, I feel blessed that she has brought Jay here to Spain. I love Jay. I thank him for making my mum so happy for the 25 years they had together. Although hers are big boots to fill, Jay has, has already announced we plan to collaborate and continue Mum's legacy in producing the online English language videos. Uh, it would be a pleasure if we can team up with some of the people here who's, who I must say, I, whose videos I use, and Yana as well, when we're teaching English. Uh, 
So one more thing, uh, or a couple more. My sister and I will miss our mother's unwavering support throughout our lives, from swimming galas to gymnastic competitions to theatrical plays and musicals and at those tough moments in our lives. She'd already booked her tickets to fly over and see the pantomime that Georgie has written and that will be performed next month. It will take my sister and I a long time to adjust to not having our greatest cheerleader in attendance or ready to answer the phone and help us with whatever pressing issue is on our minds. It's true that when someone we love dies, we get so busy mourning what died that we ignore what didn't. But a poet I admire wrote, death has nothing to do with going away. The sun sets and the moon sets, but they're not gone. And our mother's spirit lives on. Many people have told my sister and I that we share her ability for adventure. I'm sure that everyone here has their own memories to cherish of my mother. Once again, I am grateful to everyone who is present today who came to remember Vic Vicky Hollett. I speak for Georgie and myself when I say that it is an honor and a blessing to, to be the progeny of someone who has had such an impact on so many lives. Whilst each of our memories of her are unique to particular times and places and moments in our lives, I would guess that certain aspects that we remember about her will be unchanging. Her warmth, her enthusiasm, her love of life, her smile. And those things that we love about her remain eternal. Oh, thank you so much. And you guys know I'm here for you. I can't fill those shoes, but I will be here um, for you and Georgie. Uh, so um, I think uh, next on our list, uh, Joanne, is Vicky's mentor and friend, uh, Christina Whitecross. So Joanne, if you could make that happen. Absolutely. And Christine, I believe I have unmuted your line. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. I have unmuted myself. Hello. Thank you. Yes. Hello. We can hear you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I met Vicky when we published In at the Deep End. After that, we started working on business English books that were not like those available at the time. Business Objectives was the first to be edited by David Baker. Vicky was a very experienced teacher and knew that business learners needed something else. Books that were not just thorough, but fun. Books that also looked different. She was a superb writer. Sometimes it was hard to get the manuscript out of her hands and stop her from making changes one very, very, very last time. But she knew what she was doing. We decided to go for full color, daring in those days. It was interesting to meet my BBC counterpart at a conference who said, it's good to see you are making such a big mistake with business objectives. I met him again not long ago, and he apologized for having been so short-sighted. Business objectives and business opportunities were first prize winners at the English Speaking Union's Duke of Edinburgh competition. Vicky was not just a great writer, she was a very good presenter and had an amazing sense of humor. She was funny, irreverent, and could not stand idiots. When I told her that OUP, among other things, was closed in its bookshops, Vicky's reply was, idiots, mean, I cannot repeat the rest. 
she made fun of authority and had no trouble in saying what she thought. Vicky could also spot new opportunities very quickly. We traveled a lot together for many other business English books and also for what was to become Tech Talk. We were told we had to go to France to visit several schools. The first one for a group of students with low level English who were to decommission a nuclear power station. This was a very long day that started with sunshine in Paris, Vicky in summer clothes and her sandals, and finished with pouring rain in freezing Lille, where she was to give a talk late in the evening. Vicky also thought that short courses in business English were needed. These were to be task-based courses, emphasizing speaking and listening. That became quick work. Vicky would ring me up any time of day or night to discuss a project or an activity she was working on. I often asked her if she ever slept, but it was always interesting and important to listen to her. We became very good friends. We discussed new projects, applied linguistics, politics, children, and more recently, grandchildren, and moving to Almeria. Vicky was passionate about what she did, and it was a privilege to have known her. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Um, she treasured her relationship with you. She treasured all the trips she took with you, all the advice you'd given her. Um, and uh, well, one thing you said reminded me of, uh, of something so important about Vicky. Vicky had no circadian rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> she would work you know, all hours, all hours of the day and night and just sleep whenever she felt tired. So we occasionally slept on the same on the same schedule, but it's not often. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for that, Christina. And um, next on on my list is uh, is uh, her editor, who Christina mentioned, David Baker. So Joanne, would you uh, organize getting David up? Absolutely. And uh, David, if you want to go ahead and unmute, and if you desire, you can also share your webcam. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I just would like to say also a few words about Vicky, the author. And I first met Vicky at the end of 1991 when I started work as assistant editor at Oxford University Press. I joined the Business English Group and uh, work was well underway on Vicky's first big course, Business Objectives. Many of the great English language courses of that pioneering era came about through a similar process. A teacher would know what they wanted, realize that it wasn't available, and thought, OK, I'll write it myself. And such was the case with Vicky. There were a couple of Business English courses available before Business Objectives, uh, and I'd used them myself while teaching Business English in France in the late 1980s. They were good, but they were, as Christina said, they were hamstrung by the limitations of the time. They were produced on a very low budget. And for example, one of them had an accompanying recording which was made with actors from a local dramatic society as the budget didn't run to professional actors. They were printed in black and white because at that time, color printing was considered too expensive and frivolous for a course for adult learners. Vicky's business objectives and its successor business opportunities were like a breath of fresh air. And looking at these materials again, 30 years on, it's, it's still possible to see why they made such an impact. Yes, they were colorful and beautifully designed, but there was much more to them than that. The activities reflected the person who wrote them. They were thorough and rigorous, but also a tiny bit quirky. They addressed serious business topics, but they retained a wonderful sense of humor. They're like an advertisement for a style of course book writing that has slowly evaporated over the succeeding years. This was writing not by a faceless team of materials writers, but by a proper author. There was a real sense of personality behind it, and that personality was Vicky's. And Vicky, as, as Tom just said, was not just a great writer, she was also a great teacher. And at the time we were working together, she was able to test out her ideas on her classes in Cambridge at the same time as she was writing. And that meant that there was a real fresh from the classroom feel to much of what she wrote. Vicky's energy and enthusiasm were infectious. What a privilege for a young editor to have someone like that as his first author. I sort of realized it then, but of course, I came to appreciate it much more with the passage of time. It's strange how when someone dies quite suddenly, 
random things can tri trigger powerful memories. I recently watched the new film Glass Onion on Netflix. Without spoiling the plot, one of the main characters is a tech geek who communicates only by fax because he doesn't trust mobile phones. For younger people present, a fax machine was what we used before the arrival of email. In the film, we see a long fax he has sent in the middle of the night. The pages at the end become less and less coherent until by the final page, there are just a couple of scrawled words. Well, this was the kind of fax I used to get from Vicky. I would arrive at work in the morning and my correspondence tray or pigeonhole as we quaintly call it in British English would be absolutely stuffed with fax paper. The pages of the fax showed the time that they were sent and I could see Vicky's ideas progress from page to page in an almost stream of consciousness manner until they finally petered out in the early hours of the morning. Vicky's work ethic, ethic was never in doubt. The second trigger came when I was watching one of the many programmes about the British royal family shown over the new year. The footage of the late Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip reminded me of the time when Vicky was attempting to obtain a US green card through the notoriously difficult Extraordinary Ability Criterion, EB1A. Of course, nobody in Oxford was in any doubt about Vicky's extraordinary ability. We just had to prove it. Fortunately, Vicky's book had won the English speaking union Duke of Edinburgh award, and we included in the bundle of evidence we sent to her lawyer, a photo of Vicky deep in conversation with Prince Philip at Buckingham Palace at a reception immediately after the award ceremony. My suggestion that we should caption it with, with the words, a successful UK immigrant advises a successful future US immigrant was rejected. And in the end, Vicky's new citizenship, like Prince Philip's, was achieved through the spousal route rather than on merit alone. The final trigger was the classic Home Alone 2, which I thoroughly recommend for people who've not seen it, much of which takes place in the beautiful Plaza Hotel in New York. I immediately recalled the day when my manager Barnaby and I were doing recordings in New York. Vicky introduced us to Jay and they both invited us to an amazing brunch at the Plaza. Of course, this was the start of a great period of great personal happiness for Vicky, and it was such a privilege to be there at the start. When I sent details of this service and to colleagues, I got a lot of responses, which gave a flavor of how she was appreciated in Oxford. One writes, I remember Vicky fondly for her kindness, for her lovely manner and sense of humor and consistent good cheer, and also as a very skilled author indeed. She was a breath of fresh air. I am very sorry to hear the news. I have lovely memories of Vicky, such a vibrant, positive person. And the final one, though I've been out of the world for ELT for many years now, I remember Vicky for her friendliness and warmth. And it was always such a pleasure to chat with her at conferences and teacher training events. She will be very much missed by those in the community who knew her. Like all larger than life figures, Vicky leaves the larger than life gap for Jay, for her family, and for all the many people who worked with her and were inspired by her. And I feel so proud and blessed to be one of those people. David, thank you. Thank you so much. I remember our, our brunch at the Plaza very well. And um, I, I do have to tell you, though, uh, Vicky was accepted, got her green card on the basis of being an extraordinary, uh, a person of extraordinary ability. And in fact, she wouldn't marry me until she got that. So she could prove that she be became uh, a green card holder entirely on her own. And that was very much, that was Vicky. <laughs> so thank you for, for reminding, reminding us of, of that. Um, what wonderful memories. Um, the, uh, we also have in our list of uh, speakers, uh, before I turn it over to our next speaker, let me ask all of you, if there are those of you who would like to speak or whom I have forgotten that you might have told me you wanted to speak, please write in the chat so Joanne knows to, to bring you up when it's time. Next on my list is Marjorie Rosenberg from uh, I Temple. So Marjorie, uh, yeah, Joanne, if you'll organize that for us, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Hi everyone, what an honor to be here and to talk about Vicky. I can remember starting off in Austria, I sort of landed here by mistake, came as a singer, didn't get a job, so started teaching English in my day job. And I was never a very conventional teacher, but I was teaching business English at the Chamber of Commerce and came across in at the deep end and thought, 
wow, this is me. This is exactly what's going to help me and was got me through so many lessons. And Vicky at that point became a hero. And then later I realized, I never realized there were so many engineers in the world. I came from New York. We don't have as many engineers as we have in Austria. So Tech Talk was also just so helpful for me. And then I heard that IATFL BSIC was going to invite Vicky as a plenary speaker in 2009 in, to Poznan. And I had just come in as the events coordinator, which meant I got to share the stage with Vicky. The first time we met, it was extremely exciting and get to introduce her. I saw Vicky over and over at BSIC and IATFL and a friendship developed. Uh, and I wanted to mention that the plenary she gave, the title was, and this is so Vicky, Relationships Matter. What a great title for a business English conference. But that is, it, that sums up Vicky for me very well. So we kept seeing each other at conferences and then Vicky invited me to come to Philadelphia on one of my trips to the States, which was thrilling, absolutely. I wanted to meet Jay and I was thrilled about going back to Philly because I had been using the Philly Fanatic. These are not his original clothes. This is the mascot of the Philadelphia Phillies, who were my dream team back in the day. I was in Philly when they won the national, uh, when they won the World Series, which of course is not really worldwide, but for Americans, it's the World Series. And I also sang the national anthem in the stadium there. And Phil had been part of my English teaching for years, which is what I mean about not being a very conventional English teacher, or at least business English teacher. And what I remember about Philly was the house with the stairs, the sound booth in the house, I'd never seen that before, going to my first Pecha Kucha, a very special fruit bowl, and the wonderful roof terrace where we sat and enjoyed ourselves. And then the videos showed up. And I was teaching at university at that point, and I began to post them for my students to watch at home and my evaluations changed from she's not very good with tech to wonderful with technology it wasn't me it was vicky and jay so thank you very much for that uh, i included them in so many plenaries that i did i showed them in plenaries i absolutely love the videos and told everyone i knew to use them and to sum up my feelings about Vicky, she was a mentor, a friend, an inspiration, uh, inspiration, a shiro, if I can say that. And we, last time we were in touch, we were talking about visiting in Spain, which, uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to seeing her and having some time. I think the last time, one of the last times we saw each other was taking a selfie in the airport after the Sitges conference. And I would just sum up my feelings about Vicky by saying, may her memory be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marjorie. What, what fun we had in Philadelphia when you were there. It was a great memory. Um, a number of people have, uh, have written in chat that they would like to say a few words. The first one that I have on the list, and again, if I've missed anybody, just remind us in chat. Uh, is uh, Judy Wan, and we worked with Judy. Uh, one, once Vicky won the the uh, YouTube Next Up Award in 2016, we were allowed to use YouTube's beautiful studios and facilities and equipment for free whenever we wanted. Um, and so we would go up there on occasion, and we did um, uh, a wonderful video with uh, students, some of Judy's students from a school she was working in. You can probably tell more about that than I can, Judy. But it was a very enjoyable uh, project uh, with with your with your students. So, um, uh, Joanne, if you would uh, arrange for Judy Wong to be next, thank you. Absolutely, Judy. I'm going to go ahead and make you a panelist so that you can use your webcam. That's good. We can see you, Judy. Make sure your, your mic is unmuted. Hello, guys. So <clears throat> I was actually trying to figure out what the heck it was. Because I don't know. I just don't seem to think that it was such a long time ago, Jay, that we all met. And 
when I first encountered Vicky, um, I I was this really one of the oldest, I was probably the oldest at the time, graduate of the MAT cell program at the new school and not knowing what to do with myself, um, started on some online like group things. And I encountered Vicky giving this how to do a video um, thing. And I thought, oh, my God, this girl is too funny. I love it. And um, being that we're all so close in age, I was like, she's cute. This is great. I love this. And then I remember I went into Toronto for the first time for the TESOL conference. And I was like, I ran into her. And I thought, oh, my God, she's my sister from another mister. And um, and then that summer, she says that later that year, she goes, she gives me this call. She goes, honey, I know you're in New York. Can you help me out? I'm like, what do you need? She goes, um, I, I, need, I need some help. I got this. I got access to the YouTube video. YouTube studios. I said, how the hell did you get that? And she's like, oh, I got it. I got it. Can, can, can we, can we do something? He said, yeah, sure. What, what, what do you need? She goes, I need some help. I got to cast people and, and I want to do some videos. I said, show me what you want. Not a problem. She knew I was a long time performer, actress, professional in New York city. And we got together and that's when I met Jay. And I will never forget, I'm thinking this man, he got, he's got it together. He really knows this stuff. And then to find out he's a brother, a union brother of mine, which was really wild. Um, I always laugh six degrees of separation, but I will never, never forget those times. And I don't know, can I share this? Joanne, can I share a, a little quick picture? I believe you can. Could you know how to click the share button? Yes, I do. Hold on a sec. So I, I was really kind of shocked that um, they were. Um, here we go. This is what I will always remember them as. That time in the YouTube studios. <laughs> I remember. <And> that. <laughs> it was so much fun. And and we we were we were hanging out and we went out for drinks and stuff later. And I'm like, Jay, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm actually this professional. And I'm like, really? So sorry. And then I said, what? and he's it's telling me this this union thing. I'm like, really, you can't you're, you're kidding me, right? You know? <laughs> it's always amazing to me how I find people. And I love that woman so much. And Jay. I miss you guys, and I will never, never forget our time together in the YouTube studios. It was wild. It was wonderful. And my heart goes out to all of your children and know that she is never going to be gone because she's permanently, indelibly in those videos, and that means she'll always be in all of our hearts. And I miss you guys. And when I get to Spain again, I will see you again, Jay. There's, there's plenty of room. This is the, the house I'm in is called, we call it Vicky's Dream House. That's what she called it. <laughs> and, uh, and it was designed to have, uh, we have uh, really four extra bedrooms. And that's for, for guests just like you. Yes, Judy and I are both uh, in the Screen Actors Guild. And, um, and I've been a union member since 1969. She was a little bit of how old I am. <laughs> I know. And I was like laughing because I was like, Oh my God, we've actually been union members almost as long as each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Thanks, thanks so much. Next on, on my list is um, the fellow who's also uh, come to Philadelphia to, to make videos with us, a good friend uh, and um, uh, from Germany, uh, Evan Frendo. So Joanne, could you uh, uh, help uh, Evan get up uh, and speak for you? Absolutely. And Evan, if you can go ahead and just unmute and you, if you desire, you can also share your webcam. Hi, Jay. Thank you very much uh, for inviting us all to this. Um, 
I first met uh, Vicky in 93, so quite a long time ago. She was my uh, teacher trainer when I did my dip in 95, and we met so often over the years. We did various projects together. We met regularly at conferences. She visited us in Berlin. Um, our kids, my kids still remember her visit because she brought weird and wonderful presents. Um, and one of my proudest moments with Vicky was when, uh, you may remember, she um, was invited to run a course at uh, New School, and uh, she invited me to... Um, help her and we, we ran that thing together and neither of us were really academics and we we hung in there um I, I just had a look at my emails and we did over a thousand emails that year between us Vicky and me and god knows how many hours we must have spent talking about academic English and Belf and all these things but I want to share one story which will always remind me of Vicky and that is when we came to stay in Philadelphia when I came to stay in Philadelphia and life was a week of green screens and mad dogs and and other things like that. Um, and then one day she said, come on, we're going to go and run up and down the stairs um, and, and pretend to be like Rambo, which was something I wasn't really aware of at the time. And so she made me run up and down the stairs. She did a couple of takes. I think she thought I was a little plump and maybe could do with the exercise. And then at the end of that, of course, we uh, had a little dance, a little jig around the Rambo statue at the bottom of the stairs while the passers-by watched these two mad people. Um, and I think that's one of the most surreal moments in my EFL ELT career. So that's one thing I just wanted to share. She was always so much fun, and I really, really appreciate the time I had with her. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Yeah, that was the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum where uh, Sylvester Stallone, who did play Rambo, uh, but played Rocky in that movie. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's Rocky, of course. Rocky, not Rambo. Sorry. Yes. Yes, we've... No, Evan, we make everybody run up and down those stairs. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. okay. <laughs> but thank you. It was a lot of fun when you came to visit. Uh, I have two more people on the list here. There may be more that I haven't seen in chat. That maybe you can keep track of that, Joanne, for me. But um, I have Absolutely. Uh, Craig and uh, and Jennifer next. So Craig Wheatland, uh, who's uh, my neighbor, more or less, in Spain, it's about 150 miles away, uh, is next on the list. Craig, thank you so much for being here. Joanne, could you get Craig Cook in there? Absolutely. And Craig, you can go ahead and uh, feel free to turn on your webcam and unmute your microphone to speak. Hi. Thank you for, for letting me say a few words. I'll make it quick. Not exactly neighbors, Jay. I, I wish we were closer, but nevertheless, in the same country. But first of all, I mean, I've spoken to you, Jay, obviously, but my, my condolences to Tom, Yana, and Matty, and, and, and George, I don't know you. I believe you're, you're, um, you were, you were, uh, Vicky's sister, so my condolences to you as well. But I just wanted to say quickly that my kind of journey of knowing Vicky goes right back to 1995 when I was teaching. In, I started teaching in Tel Aviv for Berlitz and left there very quickly and moved on to teaching off-site business classes. And of course, the best books around at that time were business objectives and business uh, opportunities and in at the deep end. So I used those books in my classes. Now, Fast forward 20 years, I found Vicky and Jay on Simple English videos and started posting those videos in our Facebook page. And I absolutely love them. Our students love them. And then I wanted to form a mastermind group of a small group of teachers. And I thought, well, Vicky's not going to be interested in something like that. She's got this huge kind of uh, archive of books that she's written. And, and I reached out to her anyway. And she said, yes. So I was absolutely, it felt a bit like being part of an amateur dramatic society and reaching out to Meryl Streep to join it. That's how, that's how I felt when, when Vicky said yes. And then once Vicky was in the group, we, we became friends and I drove up, she was attending a conference in Barcelona. So I drove up from Valencia to Barcelona with my wife to gate crash a conference that she went to and just to have a coffee with her and then drove back again. And then of course um, I met you Jay in Philly. I think that was in 2018 when I was at the, um, the conference, you made me very, very welcome in your home. I had a fantastic time, but the highlight was sitting down with Vicky and working on video scripts with her. I absolutely love that because I had to blink and pinch myself that I was actually doing it. Um, she was a, a mentor to me. I learned so much from her. 
I learned so much from you, Jay, during those few days. And it, it, it's a, a one of my most treasured memories. She she inspired me, she motivated me. And when I was in Vicky's company recently, when we met up with you um, down south, she lifted me up. She really did um spiritually lift me up with her with her positivity and her happiness um and i just love being in in her company and i don't think it's very often and maybe many of us strive for this that when you do pass away that you can say about somebody this person has left a mark on the world this person has created things and will be remembered in the wider scope of things outside of uh, family and and close friends and I think in Vicky's case as we can see from the people here then um, she will be remembered in that way so that's all I have to say uh, thank you very much thank you Craig and, and, and it was a joy for for us to all meet up in October in Malaga uh, and, and Vicky loved meeting meeting you meeting and Andy your wife and as as did I and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of each other over the years because I'm staying here. So, <laughs> okay. Well, we're neighbors, so <laughs> that's right. And my the studio, I'm in the studio, so uh, we're we're putting it together. Tom and Yana and I will be doing more videos, and and we'll be counting on you to to collaborate with us. As yep. We have in the you past. know what you know where to find me. That's with fantastic. pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, next on my list, uh, Joanne is uh, is our good friend Jennifer Ledvedev. Uh, so if you could uh, help Jennifer, Jennifer uh, get online here, thanks. Absolutely. And Jennifer, feel free to go ahead and uh, turn on your webcam and just a reminder to unmute to speak. All right. I think everyone can see me and hear me. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you. Super. Thank you for allowing me. I'll be very brief, but um, so much of what I'm hearing is I just want to add my voice and echo um, what Craig has said, Marjorie, everyone in the chat as well, is that, you know, I can't even think of the year when I met Vicky because I feel like she's always been a part of my life. <laughs> and um, I just want to say I'm so blessed to have had her as a friend, a colleague, and a source of inspiration. And my condolences to the whole family. I'm so happy that she was with me online and offline. But what I'll remember most is offline. And I'm so happy and fortunate that she was often a lifeline. And she was someone I could call on Skype at any time. And she was such a positive source of support. And I'm so grateful for that. And I thank you. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, Vicky, forever. That's all. Thank you. Well, she valued she valued the closeness with you, as, as do I. And uh, thank you for being part of our lives, Jennifer. Thank you. You know, just, I'll just add, you know, that is a friend for a reason, friend for a season, friend for life. And I think Vicky's gift was that she made all of us feel like a friend for life. I think that's very true. Thank you so much. I see uh, that uh, Rachel has asked to uh, to speak, uh, Joanne. Is that the person who's next on our list? It is. That's what I have as well. And Ra Rachel, feel free to go ahead and turn on your webcam. There you go. And just a reminder to unmute to speak. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm Rachel, and I met Vicki through the YouTube connection. Um, we both lived in Philly, which was a very lucky thing because I think I probably would have never met her because it was Fluency MC who knew Vicky and was wanting to do something together and had reached out to me. And so I went over to Vicky and Jay's house and uh, my husband and I have said so often how lucky we feel and we felt to be connected with people who were not directly in our generation. It's so, it was so enriching to us basically to have a friendship with Vicki and Jay. And we would go to dinners, go out to eat. Vicki would be, Vicki visited me both times that I had a baby and um, we would go over to their house a lot. And I just thought that was really special uh, personally and professionally. They would, every once in a while, write some scripts, say, Rachel, we need a third person. 
let's schedule it to come over. And I would go over to their house. And I remember I would come home and tell my husband how elaborate and thought through and just more complex their videos were than mine. And I felt like, wow, I'm taking the easy way out here. They're really there was just such a sense of doing things right. And I think that's, you know, from Jay's background, there was, he wasn't going to accept a a very baseline presentation of what Vicky had developed. And I just felt like this overwhelming sense that they so went the extra mile. They, they put in a lot of time and effort to add more entertainment and um, interest to their videos. And I was always really impressed with that. And I just remember many times it would be getting late and the bus would go by and we'd all be so tired and be like, take 30. And it was just, it was very fun. Um, Also, Jay, I wanted to let you know that Vicky gave me a very serious invitation for me to bring my entire family to Spain. So we would still like to visit you there um, and see the beautiful house that I've heard so much about. And I was just very sad to hear the news and just David and I have really been sending our love to you, Jay, and, and to your whole families. Um, and yeah, like so many people have said, it's just, she was so uniquely positive with her energy and um, the whole world gets to benefit because that reads through in a video in a way that it can't in a book. So I'm so glad that we have, we have that out there. Rachel, thank you. And of course, uh, uh, there is room for, for all four of you. <laughs> we'll be there. Right right here in El Maria. We, and we, I would love to see you. Uh, and it would be, we'll have a lot of fun if we get here. Yeah. Okay. So I have to tell everybody here that um, obviously this has been the most horrible time in my life, but I've been blessed by support from Georgie, from Tom, Yana, my son, Scott, my son, Noel. Scott came over here. Georgie was over here from the UK last week. Uh, really, everybody's been really wonderful. And the messages that I've gotten from so many of you uh, have been uh, very uplifting for me, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, I want to just thank all of you for being here, and I promise you that what Vicki has started, we will continue. Uh, in her honor and in her memory. Um, That said, if there's no one else who wants to speak up, I'm going to suggest that we call it a day and ask you all to remember Vicki as I do every moment. Thank you all.